going to maybe a permanent signing, a signing perhaps that's going to cost quite a lot of money. What, how does the procedure work involving the owner, the chief executive, the manager, you? Do you all sit around a table and say, well, we're going to have to pay X for so-and-so? And who sort of would, would make the final decision, if you like? Because there's a lot of a lot of talk to go on internally. Yeah, and it, again, a very good question, and, and one that I'll try and answer as succinctly as possible. But it's um, it, it, sort of in that question, you have a microcosm about how recruitment can go wrong. Um, and and the good fortune that we've had at this club is consistency, um, because I think if one of those components change, let alone a couple of them, um, like it has happened, that happens all the time at clubs up and down the country. Um, then clearly that th there can be a disjointed nature to 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 the recruitment, and it's it's not easy to get. Um, there's no guarantees, rather to get signings right, um, but clearly you can uh, you can limit the chance of mistake with good communication. And we've always had that. We've we've always um, I say we've always had that. We've had that in this in this era of the club, um, because I wouldn't know what happened before, to be honest, Neil. And how I was signed for this football club and on two occasions is is a mystery, but. Uh, um, from a, from from this side of the fence, um, directive is clear from the owner. The communication between the owner and the, and the chief executive Neil Blake um, is is excellent. Um, I'd imagine on a daily basis, especially during a, um, a transfer window, uh, and you come into it with um, uh, with with a plan. You kind of you kind of in in, in windows gone by, summer windows especially, we've always looked to uh, to be progressive to to improve um, the, the squad that we had, which was. As well as a, a want, it was a necessity as well because we had a a very good team here. Um, of course, a great team that, that achieved promotion, won the championship title um, with a group of players that, without having the average age to hand, was probably the wrong side of 25. Um, so to to survive five years in in the Premier League, you know you're going to have to recruit in order to do that. Um, and uh, every window there was an understanding um, that would have come from the manager uh, primarily. His 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 belief so so Eddie Howe would have had uh, first and, and last word on a signing but clearly in between that first and last word there's a whole uh, a whole order process of important conversations going on with people of the level you um, you describe their owner chief executive etc um, but there was always a great understanding and a belief in um, where the message was coming from the fact that the message in the first place was an accurate one and therefore the the owner always wanted to um, and always has uh, back that uh, and uh, and allow the chief executive to 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 negotiate said deal, and uh, and hopefully come out of the transfer window with a uh, with a more competitive squad than we went into it with. Um, clearly, when you come down the level, and this is the first time I've been um, in this job that that's happened. Um, and uh, of course, it wasn't the plan to ever be in that situation, but um, we had to be reactive to it. You, you chuck COVID into the mix, and it makes it a situation where. You have to be, uh, you have to be careful. You have to be prudent. We knew that certain players would go. We didn't know exactly how many, so therefore the list that uh, the recruitment department had to have were pretty extensive. Um, we, I think, we having lost three players to to sales and then a, a number in terms of out of contract and and uh, Harry Wilson, of course, the loan going back. I think uh, probably eight or nine bodies uh, short than we were last season. Uh, but the belief um, from everyone coming into the window um, that if that was the number that, that we lost, it probably would only take one or two and uh, and a little bit more luck on the injury front to have a, a more than competitive squad to, to attack the championship with. So it's it's evolving conversations. I'm, I'm going on a lot here, Neil, but it's, you've asked me a very, very relevant question to the, the process and, and I want to give a, a, an accurate answer. But fundamentally, the key to having a... A good recruitment or a, as good recruitment as possible is good communication from the leader down and, and we definitely have that here people want to hear from you richard they don't really want to hear from me or chris I think. Uh, <laughs> just 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 a quick one um it's quite topical at the moment i'm not going to talk about other clubs businesses but sometimes there can be um disputes between technical directors and managers um what's it like for you to a eddie Howe and then jason tyndall ex-teammates what's it like to have worked and be working with them how how important is it that relationship yeah fundamental I, i'm very lucky that um the only two managers i've had doing this are, are two people that i've known since uh, since my teens um and understanding them uh, from a human perspective as well as a footballing perspective i think it is crucial to the job that i do and i really i feel sorry for <laughs> for people in my role that um that try and do that will do do this and a very good job in, in, in times as well for people that they don't necessarily know um, as well as I do 
Um, it, it clearly, that proves that it's not essential, but it, it gave me a head start definitely in uh, um, working under, uh, uh, alongside a manager as, as, as successful as Eddie also helps because he can make um, uh, bad decisions look indifferent and uh, decent decisions look great. Um, so, um, you know, that, that I think is the key. I think um, how you recruit a player, it clearly varies between club and club and everyone will have their own policy. Um, it, it's my belief that the best chance you have of having a, a successful signing is that the manager is a huge part in, in that recruitment process, which we've always had. Um, but it's also true that that manager can't be in multiple places at one time. So therefore, if Jason is preparing for the game um, um, tomorrow um, and tonight, it's unlikely that he will manage to cover the six or seven championship games that are going on. And that's why it's someone else's uh, job to make sure that that's done properly. So, so that for me is, is what the job is. And, and the better the understanding between the person in my shoes and the person picking the team and coaching the players, um, then it would one would assume that the better the chance for, for success. It, 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 it buys no guarantee because the, the magic question you want answered is how is that player going to do at this club with these teammates, at, uh, this manager in front of these fans at that time? An impossible question to, to, to ask fully. Um, so you're in the, in the lap of the gods a lot of the time. But if you narrow down um, the, the chances of mistake by doing your homework correctly and making sure that you need uh, that position clearly in the first place, then then there's all sorts of things that you can do to to, to limit the mistakes and uh, and ensure that there are, there are more good six signings than bad ones.